when I get to breweries and stuff, and because I like light beer, I don't like the fancy stuff. Yeah. And they're like, I'm like, always say I want something close to an ultra. And I get it. It's never the same. Like, why am I here spending $12 on a beer that I don't like when I could be at a dive bar spending three? I agree with that. Like, dive bars all the way. Right. Like, come on. We should put a poll up. Dive, dive bar, bar brewery. versus brewery. Such a good point. Definitely a dive bar girl. Definitely dive bar. Someone asked me, like, this weekend, like, what do, what do you like to do? And I said, well... Or like, what's there to do in Iowa or something? Oh, there's so much to do. <laughs> and so my ideal Saturday is to just bar hop all day. Absolutely. And they're like, what? I'm like, they're like, party? But I'm like, well, just keep here's, it. The, here's the kicker. I like to be in bed by mm. <laughs> like 10 with my ice cream. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a wild night out. No, we always talk about how we're similar. And that is like I, so this weekend I, or this week, I just... I just let it be known that I'm ready. I'm ready for those listening. Are we recording? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to be invited somewhere where my kids aren't allowed. Oh, okay. I'm ready. This weekend, pool party? Oh, my God. <laughs> Anything. Come. <laughs> I, there's nothing I love more in this world, just let me just stay this, th than my children, my family. But I am ready for <laughs> an invite for somewhere where they're like, sorry, no kids. No kids. Just you. Maybe my husband. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you might need a break from it all. Yeah. No, yeah. come to the pool this weekend. Oh my gosh. I might. I just might. I'll text I just you. Just might. I'm just. Yeah. But yeah. I got a bed. All right. <laughs> whoop, you whoop. still have to come down south. I have ice cream. <laughs> I know. It sounds like it. That's so I funny. Know, we need to plan a day for us to I come know, down it'd south. It'd be so good. No. Way down yonder. Right, or way down yonder by the South Skunkoochee. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was There's always a little song mixed there into is the always, <laughs> always. Into the conversation. Oh my gosh. But yeah, you, you, your Saturday, just bar hopping all day, just yeah. bopping here, bopping there. I love yeah. it. We did that. I was at the Ozarks last weekend and Sunday it was a little rainy. Oh. And we're like, what are we going to do today? Can't pool it. So I'm like, let's go to the strip and yeah. we'll have one at each bar. That's the best. Oh my God. We went to like was that just eight not or nine. Oh, so fun. So fun. So fun. My girlfriend did her bachelorette party down at the Ozarks and we did that. We, we bounced around on the boat to dive bars on the boat. And it was yeah. so much fun. And you know what? I got the, so the thing I've been seeing on my Instagram, but for younger people, TikTok, it's like when you hold up the two, so like, let's say it's you and me. Okay. And I'm holding up two signs and I know what they say, but you don't. Oh, and you and then pick you pick one. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that'd be so fun with bars. Yes, it would. <gasps> oh, Doesn't I love it. It's like, like good it's time? making me excited. I know. Because it's we, so we work hard. We work so hard. We say it all the time. We're not curing cancer, but what we're telling stories that, that can are. help. Yes, that are. I'm sorry, when it is the weekend, when it's weekend time, it's weekend time. Yeah. And I just want to, I'm really good at the weekends. Yeah. I'm so good at I the weekends. I can do it. I can do it too. too. What are you going to do this weekend? <laughs> Come to my pool? <laughs> Come to Shelby's pool. Get the babysitter. Well, I don't actually know what we're going to do this weekend. I So I was hot and heavy into the landscaping. And then we got busy and that kind of just like, fell to the wayside so I need to get back finish a few things about that how's your grass situation you know I'm gonna show you a picture <laughs> I was just showing a picture of my yard is it in there and look it's like shut up I know, but so it's green and you have grass instead of dirt well yes but a lot of that's weeds <laughs> but oh. I don't care like it's green I'll take what I can get yeah I'll take what I can get <laughs> so that's where we're at with that but that's yeah. so exciting it is exciting yeah that's been a long at least it looks like journey. even if it's not even if I were to walk out there in my bare feet and be like ow <laughs> at least it looks it looks good yeah you I'm all about like that visual yeah oh 100 percent about the optics <laughs> yeah we were on a call yesterday and we were looking at a website and Brandon brought up the point how like it was me Melanie and Mackenzie and he's like each of you are looking at this website in three totally <laughs> different ways yeah right? how were you looking at it I was seeing how they laid things out like what where did they put things and order them and yeah whatnot Brandon was looking at the the work the yeah. actual content Melanie was looking at the clients they worked with and I it didn't hold my attention for very long, <laughs> and I closed out of it. No offense, but 
a website that goes unnamed. Think about all those brand or all those brains put together. That's why you get such great products at Bing Bang. One hundred percent. Can we just say that because you you have a lot of critical eyes <laughs> on your work. Well, that's what we always say. Like, why a marketing partner is so pivotal because, like, yeah, you guys have you have your businesses brains and then we have our brains and then just more yes. brains in the room is yes is better than less definitely and i think well i know a lot of people sometimes ask me like what's the hardest part of your job because again it's not rocket science but the thing i had to learn and maybe the most difficult and challenging just for someone like me i'm not really a confrontational person mm. by any means i mean when i hear bs i can mm-hmm. sometimes call it out but being more vocal with clients when they're like, this is what it is and this is what it should be. And so it took me a long time to kind of be able to figure out how to share my opinion in what I think using my expertise Mm -hmm. um, to say like, well, what if we looked at it just a little bit differently and tried to not change their mind, but understand why we're making the right. Because it can make. be difficult. Because we do work with a lot of other marketers for these brands. Like that's why they kind of come to us is because their marketing team is small, and those marketers have their yeah thoughts and how the it should be done and whatnot. And we have our thoughts. So it's yeah, it is. You want to stand your ground, but also respect the business mm-hmm. too at, at the same time. Yeah, so I get that too. It's a balance. Yeah, but we make it work. We make it work. Like drinking on Saturdays. Drinking on Saturdays. <laughs> if our wish for you, if that's something you're into, I mean, it could be a lemonade, a nice cold lemonade. It doesn't well, matter what yeah. you're having a nice cold drink of, but treat yourself. Treat yourself. And treat yourself to this episode of the Bing Bang Download as well. Yeah. Welcome Part back. Part two. Part two. Of our chit chat GPT. Yeah. We were going back and forth in the name for a while. We were. I was like, there's a pun there that is waiting to come out. And mm-hmm. I liked the chit chat one the best. Chit chat GPT, what curious? Yeah, it's like I think curious chat or something. Yeah, curious. They I were all winners. Yeah, they were all winners. But yeah, we chose. And one. chat GPT didn't come up with any of them. No, it didn't. <laughs> you know, it's like very meta <laughs> that it did not. Yeah. It did not name itself. Just in these nog- it goes to show you can't take the noggin. Exactly, the it goes to show. Marketing. <laughs> the human creativity is yeah. always going to rise above that the, sounded the computer. Yeah. No, so funny. Well, welcome back. We hope that you did enjoy the first episode. What what did we do? We outlined, we overviewed, we described what ChatGPT is, we described what AI is, we, how it works, how it works, and how why we use it's it. important for your business. Yeah, why to it grow. can seem intimidating, but not to be intimidated by it. Um, yeah, we were throwing a lot of terminology at you, so we did work to put together a glossary of terms. Yeah, we did. On social. Yep, it's on our Instagram right now. You can check it out, and we are going to be working to put together, at the end of this, a whole PDF download that you can have uh, and get from us that explains everything we've talked about with prompts and definitions. And yes. So also, if you haven't listened to that last one, do that first, because we are going to bring, bring that up yes. a lot in today's conversation. Yes, so. we are. Yes, we are. So yeah, I think looking ahead toward the conversation we're going to have today is the last episode was an overview. This is really going to be ways that you can use it in your business or, you know, we say business, but it can be your personal life too. Um, But these are really more geared toward business. And to kick it off, we spent so much time talking last week about chat GPT and AI and how they are and, and what they are. We don't want you to think that there's just one option out there. There are actually multiple options yep. out there. Um, your favorite brands, Google, Bing. I don't know if anyone I uses know. Bing. They're I'm creating like, their own. Where? Because, like, you know, Apple, you have Safari, mm-hmm. Google, you have Chrome. Like, where does Bing come up as, like, the natural, like, I what know. device? Poor you have to Bing. download like, it? Or? You must. <laughs> I. It's just, like, Let bookmarked. us know if <laughs> Bing is your browser of choice. <laughs> For real. Or search engine of choice. I That threw me back. I'm like, does she I mean know. Bing Bang? Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I know. We don't have AI. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Uh, yeah, threw me off. So, yeah, <laughs> this funny. This list was compiled by HubSpot, a partner software that we use. Mm-hmm. So we'll just run through them really, really, really quick. You can yeah. We can put this list in the show notes or this link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. But the first one is Bard. <laughs> and I love that name. I didn't dig in to <laughs> find out what, what it means. Bard means. Let me try to Google while you can okay. kind of talk about it. Yeah. So Bard was created by Google. Um, Shelby sent me an Instagram uh, 
article, I guess, yesterday mm-hmm. or a graphic yesterday that it was talking about Bard. So while this is being recorded, there's something going on. So there's that submersible that is currently missing right now. And so I I typed that into chat GPT, like, what are we going to do about this? And yeah. chat GPT popped up and was like, actually, I only know current events from September 2021. Yeah. Which really shocked us, I guess. Yeah. And it goes back to what we talked about um, last week, too, and how the, the architect architecture got trained yeah um and all the information has is like all there so like it's not gathering new info or whatnot but so when you said it hasn't been updated in two years I was like I guess I expected it to be updated more often than that I know (laughs) me too and so yeah my my thought is maybe they the way they are inputting the data like here are the current events up into a certain point and now it's still it can still scan what's out there and what's live, but I don't know if it doesn't understand it at, I don't know. Yeah. Again, like learning, understanding this, but yeah. But the carousel graphic, it was highlighting that chat GPT hasn't been updated since 2001, but Bard has. Yes. Correct. Yep. It's, it knows everything in real time. It knows everything as it's happening. So. Which makes sense because Google. Right. Yeah. Google, Google knows everything. Yeah. Google knows everything. <laughs> if we don't know the answer, then Google, Google it. Google it. <laughs> oh yeah. My degree is based off Google. <laughs> Which is we funny. established that. Okay. Bard stands for poet. <laughs> 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 Says Google. <laughs> oh, it's like poet in a different language. Yeah. When it comes to the meaning of Bard in the context of Google's AI chat, it stands for poet. The name is a direct reference to William Shakespeare, widely regarded as the Bard of Avalon. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Do like, you? Like, well, I don't get how poet connects with it. Is it old English? Like, bard of, of Avalon? Is that, that? I guess. That's what that means? It's tra- direct <laughs> translation? Oh, my gosh. We are showing <laughs> our uh, Bill Shakespeare knowledge I right know. now. Okay. By associating bard with the renowned, re- renowned poet, Google aims to highlight the chatbot's creative abilities in generating authentic and unique content. Excellent. Perfect. I like that. I like that a lot. Go, okay. bard, go. So, yeah. Bard is an option. Bing AI. Yep. Uh, you chat, Poe by Quora, which is funny. Poe, poet. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. HubSpot AI tools. So they have a, a whole bunch of tools that you can use for free if you don't have a membership, or you know, if you do, then you can access more. Chat Sonic, Megatron, <laughs> Turing Natural Language Generation. That sounds intimidating. I was just going to say that. I'm I'm not. That's number seven. I'm By not Megatron. going to. Yeah. <laughs> Jasper AI. I have heard of Jasper AI. Yeah. Um, I, I actually get ads for that on LinkedIn. Do you? Yeah. So I think it's like more toward the content creation type. Um, like uh, visual and static or like video? Like I, visual and static. I shouldn't say. Okay. I shouldn't say. Um, but I have recorded. I know I've screen recorded one of their videos. Yes. I'm sorry. Because... It popped up on my LinkedIn. It was like, this ad was created all by AI. Oh. I think I said, I don't know, I sent it to somebody. It kind of took your idea. And it's, yeah, I know. And it's like, it's nice. Their branding's really good. It's clean. Yeah, it makes it fast and easy to create content for your blog, social media, okay. website with Jasper. Yeah, so it's probably more stuff. Long form writing. content. Oh. Writing long form content. Yeah. Nice. Uh, perplexity Jasper. and open AI playground. That sounds, that sounds questionable, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> red flags. Yeah, red, red flags. flags are flying. So just like we said, chat GPT is an option. I would say it's the most popular right now, but there are yeah. other options. If you, I don't know, have, um, a loyalty to a certain brand like Google, then go try out Bard and see what you think. Yeah. We'll have to start messing around with some of those other ones too. And we can report back our, experience with yeah. the other ones because we've just been sticking to chat gbt definitely and someone that you follow and respect a lot has yeah. created their own uh-huh um uh, jasmine star she is a business owner um and she's grown her business over the past like couple decades but she just launched um she has a m- monthly membership for social media and she launched her own version of AI within it called her name's Dottie. And so it's essentially the same, some of the same stuff we're going to talk about today, but it's more personalized to you, you know, mm-hmm. like it already knows who you are, your target audience, what your business is. And um, it creates captions and scripts and all that. Based so on cool. It is really cool it's that so other cool. people are getting in on it too. This, this all reminds me of, and I'm, we will get to the the podcast I promise but <laughs> Disney original movies do you remember Disney yes. original movies okay do you remember Smart House yes <laughs> <laughs> like I vaguely. feel like if, oh man Smart House had a 
death grip on me. Like I <laughs> loved the movie Smart House, yeah. but it did for a Disney movie. Parts of it got a little dark and it's kind of like, I believe the fear of what some people have around AI. People yeah. are like, AI is going to end humanity. I honestly don't think so. Um, <laughs> evolve or die, but <laughs> Smart time will house, tell. yeah, time will <laughs> tell. I suppose Smart House definitely like it knew you, it knew you know, and then it you know she kind of turned because yeah. she was getting a little bit yeah. disrespected. She did. So yes, yes, it's coming back. Yes, to me it now. was so good, but oh that's, God, that's that's so what all funny. this reminds me of. Oh my goodness! Well, like Xenon, do you remember Xenon? Cetus <laughs> <laughs> Lapidus, of course I do. <laughs> Gosh, you crack me! Up. <laughs> oh my goodness, so funny. So funny. All right. Well, mm-hmm. before we, we get into it and how you can use it in your business, mm-hmm. here's a stat I want to read you. And this is from May 2023, which I believe makes it completely outdated in just a month. Isn't that so Yes. Wild? So I guess we'll have to look up the new stat and we can. Yeah. I even wondered the stat you brought up last. You got like how many people are using ChatGPT. I yeah. want to check that number again. Absolutely. That be interesting? Yes. So this was from May of 2023. ChatGPT and artificial intelligence powered Oh, and artificial intelligence chat or chatbot, yes. <laughs> ChatGPT is most used by companies in the technical and educational industries with over 200 companies using it huh. in 2023. And that was Tatista. Just Tatista. Um, that is low. That is a low yeah. number. And that was in May. But technical and education companies. So you think That's like, true. you know how last time we were talking about like code and stuff? Mm-hmm. like it Software code? development, yeah. That is so interesting. What do you I think education know. is? That could be maybe, you know, as we get into process and mm. things like that and how to kind of, but I'm not, I'm not sure, but just at like face we value. Like, in an education industry. No, no. I'm thinking, like, schools and universities. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Potentially. So, we'll dig into that, but, but that yeah, just, that number seems so low. 200. In May, and I would venture to guess it skyrocketed since then. Because yeah. that's, I don't know. I mean, definitely didn't just show up, but I feel like the the larger population started to learn about it in in April, May. So super, super interesting. Yeah. So let's dive into the ways that we see that you can use ChatGPT for your business. Absolutely. You want to kick us off? Kick us off with number one, yes. So this is maybe the most easy or, um, I don't want to say easy, but it might just be the most obvious. So you can use ChatGPT and other um, AI chatbots like this to personalize customer experiences through yeah. your own chatbot. Yeah. So we are all pretty much familiar with the chatbot is you go to someone's Facebook page and that little messenger box, that, how can I help you? Are you looking for something? Hello, we are open between the hours of this and this, right. or you go to a website and one pops up. So I, this is perfect for people like me who prefer instant messaging. I mean, I yes. grew up on MSN messenger. That is my preferred way of that communication. That was your jam, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> You got some trouble on there. I sure did. Not to bring up some old <laughs> ghosts. Yeah, past. <laughs> just the skeletons are the leaving the closet there it is. <laughs> and the ghosts. There it is. Um, um, but yeah, so we're all used to them. Um, I would say nine times out of ten, probably more than that, it is it is AI powered. It is not a real person right. sitting there typing. However, you know, back when they first started, I'm sure it was mm-hmm. people would use maybe you know businesses overseas to help them. Yeah. Be available all hours of the night, but the chat bot. So people can actually integrate through an API um, a chat bot from ChatGPT to their own business, to their own Facebook page, to their own website. Yeah. So last week, I don't know if we touched on it. um, Like what API actually stands for. Yeah. Can you dive into that a little more? You, we kind of gave like a very vague. Yes. Explanation of it, but. Yep. So API. It still confuses me even a little bit. And APIs have been around for a really long time. So what it stands for is Application Programming Interface. So say I have this website and there is a software or some sort of tool over here that I think, oh, wow, if I could just integrate the two or make those two talk to each other, yeah. APIs are developed and it's just basically code to let those two softwares speak to each other. Got it. And so that is what, that is how you can integrate a chat GPT chatbot into your own um into your own website, Facebook page, or whatever. And we'll go through the step-by-step yeah. on that. So I had this thought yesterday, again, we were on a call um, with the API thing, because we were talking about how we wanted to communicate information from our 
from Workamajig mm -hmm. to HubSpot? Would mm -hmm. API be able to? So I'm sh there may be an API that exists on yeah. that. You just would have to look it up. And so like um, a HubSpot, for example, they will tell you our software is compatible with blah, 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 blah. Like it Got usually it. gives a list um, because our last project management system, one did not exist, but we were working with our HubSpot partner and they're like, well, we could figure out how we could create this API to make this work. So them being so popular, I would bet that there yeah. is an API, but we'll we don't have to look into that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, so interesting Yeah, um, because they're both huge, wonderful softwares that <laughs> have helped our business yeah, tremendously. Um, and to have them speak would be great. So yeah. Um, Chatbots. And what does chatbot, like, you know, what would including a chatbot in your website software, you know, what would mm -hmm. that do for you? And you really have to like kind of map that out and figure it out rather than just go like sign up and say, oh, I want it. Yeah. What are you going to have that do for well, your yeah. business? We even think, of, we always talk about how your website's like your 24 hour salesperson and it kind of goes back to this chatbot idea too. If they exactly. actually do want to talk to someone at 2 a.m. about your business, chatbot's there exactly. to talk to them about it. Exactly. And so like last week we were saying, chatbot or chat GPT AI, they are not going to do the work for you. They're going to enhance the work that you've already done. Right. It's going to enhance your website. It's going to enhance the customer experience on your website, mm -hmm. on your social media pages. It's just something that exists to make it better. And so you can decide ahead of time, okay, I want my chat bot to gather leads or I want it to intake information, or I just want it to be educational mm -hmm. and help on the brand customer awareness support, side, yeah. customer support. Um, so you just want, want to figure that out before you do it. So it's pretty, it's a pretty simple process and I'm just going to run through it. Yeah. How do you do it? quickly okay so you're first going to go sign up for the gpt3 api key that's a lot of words <laughs> chat gpt3 is just the third generation of it so oh. they have been like updating. iphone 5 yes exactly <laughs> yep and five. the api wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was like 10 iphones ago <laughs> my mom was just, she stopped by last night and she's like i turned in my old phone and it is they are up to like 20 now and i had the seven I'm like yeah <laughs> still have a button yeah yeah it did um Okay, so... And then API means the application performing. Yep. I mean, programming interface. Yep, exactly. So you're going to sign up for that key. That is just going to be a unique key uh, pin, basically, that you you have that that's your own. So protect that. Don't give that out. Otherwise, your chat bot could pop up on, on other places. Protect that <laughs> key. Yeah. <laughs> that yes. would be a scandal. <laughs> oh, I know. It would be. It would be. It would be confusing. Um, then you're going to want to choose the platform form for your chat bot. So there's several, you could use Facebook messenger, Slack, WhatsApp, mm -hmm. your own website. So you're just going to need to decide where you think it's going to be the most effective Define the purpose. Step three, define the purpose and functionality of your chat bot. This is huge. Just like we were saying. Yeah. So what do you want your chat bot to do? Do you want it to, um, be customer service? Do you want it to be lead gen sales? What do you want it to do? So identify that. So you're not just sending your chat bot in the wild and he's like, he doesn't know what questions <laughs> to ask. Then we'll get to step four, which is where we clear that up. You're going to create that script. Mm -hmm. So what exactly do you want your chat bot to say? You don't want your chat bot to go rogue like the smart house did. You want <laughs> it to have a clean script that it can read from and use um, when it is talking to your potential customers. Yep. Then you're going to, step five, you're going to use ChatGPT3 API to train your chatbot. This is where it gets creepy. Okay. It's going to start to learn behaviors. Um, you're going to feed the API your script and allow it to learn from the data that it gathers from it. That so is interesting. Yes, it is. My mind's like connecting dots in my head, yeah. which we'll get to why that I'm yeah. connecting dots, but Absolutely. that is wild. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Uh, can I go back to step two for a yeah, second? Yeah. So it says uh, it can include like Facebook mes Messenger, Slack, WhatsApp. So all that can be integrated into my website. Like the... I believe that you're... And again, I'm speaking from what I know. I think you can integrate the chatbot to your website. So yeah. there's several platforms that you can use the chatbot, including Facebook Messenger, Slack, WhatsApp, and or your website. Got it, got it, yep. got it. Okay. Sorry, that was lingering my brain. No, I, <laughs> and I want to make sure I'm clear on that. So we will double check. Um, step six. Step six, just like you would do in anything, test and fine tune your chatbot. So make sure you're testing it. 
You're having people come on within your organization and test it. Asking the most mundane questions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and making sure the answers are correct and appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. Yeah. Step seven, you're going to deploy that little guy or oh, gal. And you're going to just leave the nest, away. little guy. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> uh, go, go make her business. Exactly. Business. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I love that feature of AI because, uh, like we've talked about, it's been around for a while, mm-hmm. but just... Now, like, that there's more of an awareness around chat, BG, chat GPT. That's so hard to say. It, so it really is. Um, it's cool to, like, bring that idea of marketing, I guess you could call yes. it, back into people's yeah. minds. It's like a little refresh. Absolutely. Because when we talked about it last week, it was very fluff. It still was, like, a very fluffy idea. But you can actually use it. Yeah. 100%. Can, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's an application to use. I was having that thought on... Um, when I was writing out my stuff for this and I was like, people just are over complicating it. And I think it gets like really scary and like, they don't want to say the wrong thing or all that stuff, but it's like, just, yeah, it's just, just try it. I know. (laughs) I was, who was I talking to yesterday? I, and I said, I sometimes let like the unknown fuel my optimism. And we were, we were talking about that submersible thing unfortunately (laughs) and I'm like I just don't know enough so I'm gonna let the unknown like fuel my optimism that these people will be found and everything's gonna be okay where I think a lot of people especially not a lot of people I shouldn't say a lot but some people especially in areas that just they don't know they let the unknown fuel their like fear yeah and they're like absolutely not reflex yeah and so I I've done the same with this I'm just letting my knowledge I don't have kind of fuel my interest my curiosity my optimism on this i love that and quote so, <laughs> thanks <laughs> <Mackenzie> Edie. <laughs> Edie. <laughs> we'll i would rather stuff. be quoted on that than a lot of the things that i say <laughs> yeah, true <laughs> you and i both yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have a podcast yeah. mm, man it lives, it's gonna live on forever oh shit oh man so that's awesome yeah, yeah that i love was, that future that was one so mm-hmm. i'm gonna let you kind of talk through number two the landing page yes Okay, so, yeah, we've kind of talked about this for us. Um, When we are creating landing pages for, like, to get direct people to download a freebie or to book a call or whatever, um, sometimes that sales copy can be hard to write, and Mm -hmm. you want to make sure that it's effective. You just don't want to throw something out there and see if it works. So using um, ChatGPT, and again, these last three kind of, like, these next three all kind of work together, but um, you can lean on ChatGPT to formulate the type of copy and how you want that, what you want that copy to look like and feel like on your landing page. Right. Yeah, exactly. So if you have, you know, the campaign that you're going to run. So maybe you just left your sales meeting and you're like, we need to run this campaign really quick because we need to do X, Y, and Z. Use that information along with a little bit of your personality, your branding, type it into um, chat GPT with your prompt and your constraints again, Mm -hmm. and say like tape a paragraph um, welcoming folks to your website where you are selling X, Y, and Z, and then the action that you want them to take. Yeah. So it's rather than try to make it clever and amazing, you have all the information there. Feed it to that. Feed it to ChatGPT and see what comes out. And then, of course, refine it from there. Right. But you already know what you want to do. Yeah. The hardest part is sometimes just making it all. You know, telling just it the icing on the cake, or even just telling. Yeah. I think of like the heart, the biggest thing about chat GPT is the prompt that you give it. Like that is what's going to make your outcome the most yeah. effective for you. So like knowing what to tell it and not being afraid to be like, you did the exact thing that I did not want you to do. Like you can say that to it, be yeah. like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Let's try this instead. Mm-hmm. So it is just, it's like talking, it's like having a relationship with it really someone. Is. And it's an, it's really an art. And so you and I had um, listened to the same resource where it was talking about, People are learning how to get so good at at the prompts and the constraints that they are they are selling them. Yeah, they're se- selling their model for how they do it. So just like you would sell a Photoshop preset or a what else did I know, it compare it to? I just go to Photoshop preset. Photoshop preset or yeah, in our world. Light, light, <laughs> Lightroom preset. Yeah. Um, people are basically packaging up these prompts. They know the ingredients to put in the perfect prompt to get exactly what they want out of it. And they're packaging up in those and selling them. It's It's genius. It's so genius. (laughs) It's so niche. Um, It's so niche. Yeah. And then you, you know, I bet that some people will get even more niche. 
um, and they will start to sell prompts and constraints around the insurance sector, you know, <laughs> yeah, they'll just start real. to get more and more. That just exploded my mind. I know. It's, I know. <laughs> I stick to my little again, it's just world. like, <laughs> wild. I know. Wild. Um, but yeah, the constraints are huge and it kind of leads into social media. And I wanted to bring up this post since we're talking about yes. prompts. There's this girl I've been following on Instagram. Her name is Coffee Contracts and she teaches real estate agents down in Florida, like how to market their yes. business on online. I started following her after yeah, you told me about her. Yeah, she's really she's cool. Um, but she's been loving ChatGPT and she was showing us how to create a month of content using ChatGPT. So I'm going to give you her little formula. There's so many of this, so much of this stuff out there on the internet. Like you can look for it. This is just what resonated with me yes. um, and how I liked the way she used it. Because I think sometimes even with chat GPT, we give it like one sentence. We're like, write this for me like this. And she's, I'm about to go through what she recommends. Perfect. And it's like par- paragraphs and stuff. So you want to give it the context, some background on who you are, what your goal is, and the type of content you're looking to create. Your tone, which we've talked about, if you're like conversational or witty, more formal or professional. Um, You can even, I've used that before in our brand workshops, we ask um, the clients, like if their brand was a celebrity, uh, what brand would it be? So I'll do that sometimes with chat. I love it. Make it sound like Blake Shelton. That's so smart. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Format, the type of content you show specify what format you want your content to take you can specify length or ask chat gpt to create a carousel post real script instagram caption landing page copy Mm -hmm. script writing Mm -hmm. like all that stuff Mm -hmm. and then the prompt so give it a specific prompt to align with your goals and interests so here's an example the context Again, she is a real estate agent Mm -hmm. in Tampa. Right. right, right. (laughs) I'm a 30-year-old female real estate agent in Tampa, Florida. I want to create an Instagram carousel post that my ideal client finds valuable and will want to save for later. My ideal client is a first-time home buyer looking to stop renting and invest in their first home. Like, look how specific she is in that. Yeah. Like, first-time home buyer wanting to invest, wants to stop renting. Those are all traits, and we even talk about that Mm -hmm. in our digital campaigns Mm -hmm. that we run, that... Chat GPT needs to know to formulate something that Absolutely. can benefit you. Yeah. So the tone. She wanted a witty and conversational tone. I want the post to have strong uh, attention grabbing hook to keep my audience swiping all the way through. Meaning like she wants a hook on the mm-hmm. top of each slide. I want this hook to have I want this to have a strong hook as the title. Then each page will have a header in the paragraph underneath. Like I'm not like it's <laughs> just so, so specific. It should end with a call to action promoting the free download, a first time home buyer guide. The link for that will is in my bio. Here is the prompt. And this is where she gets into the, like the 30 days of content. You ask it the question, like, what are five things first time home buyers need to know? Mm-hmm. I just, I love that way that she's talking to yeah. chat GPT to get well, the exact yeah, thing y- that she wants. Uh, yeah. The, If you want to get something good out of it, you have to put good stuff in Mm -hmm. to get good stuff out. But I love it. So it's, say you're, you are giving that to your copywriter, whoever, you're going to treat it like it's a human being who needs all the information Mm -hmm. just the same way. Yeah. So yeah. That's how we look at our brand workshops even too, is like, we love having those with clients because that's our way to get to know your tone, Mm -hmm. the type of audience you Mm -hmm. like to attract, what you're trying to sell, all that stuff. So it's the same thing. Exactly. We need all that information so we're able to create content exactly. on behalf of your business. Exactly. Yes. Oh, I love that. I, I know. love that. Wasn't That's that so, so interesting. Good. It's so intense. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. I think the slide of it actually says this post will get us out of business or something. Well, yeah, she's going to be one. She needs to start selling that information, just like what we were talking about before. Yeah. If she start, if she puts a price tag on that and doesn't give it away for free, yeah. then, yeah. But it's oh. all part of the marketing cycle. It's, now it's that brilliant. I know. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, and that kind of leads into number four with being scripts. Uh, like we've talked about in some previous episodes, repur- repurposing content. So we're big on working smarter, not harder. And we know that any piece of content can be transformed Mm -hmm. into a greater piece of content or a lesser piece of content um so using that same prompt I this Mm -hmm. is how how I saw it using that same prompt and that same output now you're able to chat communicate with chat gpt like add another point Mm -hmm. to this to like make it longer or make it more conversational end with this question so you're able to talk with it um a little more in depth in a script writing format yeah I love it so the way I think about it is 
we we have done our brand workshop with the client. We know um, exactly like who they are and what they want and the goals that they want to achieve. So then we have taken that to the concept team. We have this brilliant campaign concept. Mm -hmm. The look, the feel, everything is there. Part of their package includes a store, a brand video. We have all this great information. We just haven't written the script yet. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity. 100%. Great opportunity. We have the tone. We have the look. We have the feel. We have the audience. We have the goals. Yeah. Just the way that you write it, you know, it's going to take a little back and forth. Yeah. And then you're not going to rely 100% on the script that it outputs. You will be able to get in there and make your tweaks, but it's going to give you something really, really good if you put the really yeah. good information in. Um, I was messing around with it this morning and you can have it like finish your sentences. So I was <laughs> just starting a prompt and I said, curious what marketers include in a digital campaign to leverage their business. Here are five key factors to consider. And I just listed one factor. I said target audience. And then it went on and added supporting copy for target audience and gave me four more tips Amazing. for supporting copy. Like that's a script right there. It's a script. <laughs> like, it absolutely is. Record that sucker and get her on the internet. Right now. <laughs> Let's right now. go. Hit Our record. cameras are set We up. already are recording. <laughs> so good. And also a cool thing about it I did want to highlight as well is that it'll remember what you say in the chat. So like once you start yep. a chat, that's, I'm going to call it like a thread, um, it'll remember everything you guys have talked about mm -hmm. up until that point. So it begins to understand you better. So it can reference like a script it wrote for you. So if you have yeah. like a video script thread, um, it'll be able to reference a video script that it wrote for you or previously. Um, so it keeps the same tone um, and messaging yeah. there with you. Yeah, exactly. And you can also edit the original request prompt and constraints that you gave it the first time. Yep. So you don't have to copy and paste and start all over and have this gigantic like, 8 million word thread. You can, you can do that and it, it will edit as necessary, yeah, which is that nice. Yeah, brings up another point. I was, sorry, I was in my, the zone of my research oh, no, this morning. <laughs> so you can ask it to rewrite, um, like, the following post. Yeah. That, so you can say, um, I'd like you to rewrite this post, Adds, but change these things. Add some keywords, uh, make the tone more casual, or reformat it so it's more of, like, a storytelling way. And then insert the thing that you want it to rewrite. So good. And it will. <sighs> so it helpful <laughs> so helpful like we don't deserve this yeah no we don't we don't we don't and for right now we're just we're just living in it because it's free and we love that yeah we love, <laughs> we right love the freeness so cool oh uh, do you want to round us out yes, with number five exactly yes yeah. so intelligent automation and efficiency for internal processes so processes in any business are very very important um and so you can rely on ai to kind of get in, look at the process that you have out there. If there are repetitive um, steps, you can lean on it to kind of help you clean it out. And so when I worked in a corporate environment, we would do these things called Kaizens. And I, I'm not going to say which culture they came from because I don't want to get it wrong. But essentially, it was like the art um, and exercise of taking a process and cutting all the fat out and making it more of a lean yes. process. Yes. So removing this step, removing this step, removing this step. And we would literally take Post-its and write the whole process on the on the board we'd use like the string and go to, it was it was a pain like it was week week long activities yeah. that we would do depending on the department and um the process. what we were trying to do <laughs> and so then we'd you know remove a post-it we'd all feel really good about it because we we're making the lean the process more lean you can rely on ai to help you do that yeah. so it, you're giving it all its information and it just has the ability to say like these two steps overlap like why don't we eliminate one or uh -huh. so as it's beginning to get smarter, as the APIs are um, beginning to be developed or continue to be developed, there will be, I believe, in the future ways to pull it in and say, like, help me with these processes, even in, like, a j work right. a jig or, you know, whatever process. So being able to rely on it to just see what the human eye cannot see yeah. is huge and just make those processes more lean for, for everybody. Yeah. Um, and that's what we were just talking about kind of at the top was what is so great about a marketing partner is we're able to see things that you don't see when exactly. you're like inside your brand. So it's the same sort it's of same parallel. Thing. I love that parallel. I, thank you. I just did a that's full circle really nice. moment. That was a full <laughs> to the very beginning of this episode. I loved it. Yeah. So there's five you got five fingers yeah <laughs> reasons why you can use this in your business and it very applicable ways to yeah use these easy you could easy. Use, start it today you could start it today i and i we challenge you to start this today yeah plan your 30-day 
go follow coffee contracts and plan your 30 day socials calendar. Ab- absolutely. It's absolutely. So cool. Amazing. Well, that was a lot of fun. I loved working yeah, through that. Yeah, thank you for leading us on that journey. Of course. It I'm was, it was fun. Yeah, I think we deserve a beer. I think we deserve a beer. <laughs> I think we deserve a weekend of just like bopping around to bars yeah, and yeah. Pool, time, pool time, sunshine. It better not rain this weekend. <laughs> no. Rain, literally no, no. rain on my parade. Um, but yeah, next week I believe we are di- diving into the ethics and the mm-hmm. feelings around oh, emotions. Something yeah. I'm not good at. I know. I'm going to break <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about just like those, you know, some people do have scary feelings around mm-hmm. it or nervous feelings around it. And some of the ethics, like you sent me an article yesterday. Mm-hmm. What was the article? The Paul McCartney, right? They're Beatles. Um, they're recreating like, they're, I think it's the last song in their album using, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher it and look like, no, a gosh dang idiot. Who no, is it? John Lennon's voice. Yeah, John Lennon's voice. That's what I'm, I'm yeah. going to butcher the name. So yeah, they're like t- using AI to reconstruct. Uh, yeah, his voice for the last song of the album. So I, I would. And there are some opinions on I'm it. I'm sure there are opinions on that yeah. because is that right? Is that wrong? Who's, um, who gets like copyrights for Yeah. It? Even, um, I know that they had talked about recreating a movie, uh, and it was going to be like basically AI James Dean. Okay. And he's been dead for several years, but he was like this hot movie star. They were going to, so things like that we're going to discuss. Yeah. And we, this is something we really do want to hear from you. Like, what are your feelings? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it's a tool that you can use, but what are your real feelings about it? And, and we'll yeah. discuss them next week. I'd love to know as well. So yeah. you can uh, follow us on Instagram at it's bing bang and let us know, send us a DM, drop a comment. Yeah. We're always looking to respond. There's no chat button there. No, that's us, baby. That's <laughs> us, baby. You're getting the raw unfiltered <laughs> replies, maybe unfortunately for you, but <laughs> while you're at it, you, you know, your phone's open. You're, why don't you jump over to the, I, the, Apple Podcasts or Spotify app and leave us a little review. Yeah, that would be awesome. That is how we're able to grow our podcast yes. and keep putting out this awesome content for you guys. Um, yeah, just go over to Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe and scroll to the bottom, yeah. leave a little five star rating. That's right. Thank and we'd love that. to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for again going on this little journey with us. It's been a it's been a fun chit chat GPT and with you. <laughs> chit chat GPT part two. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.